Hello, my name is Johnny Morrell. I'm an organizational psychologist who does program evaluation. I do lots of hands-on evaluation, and I also do a lot of research about using complexity in evaluation. This is the second of five videos on that topic. In this one, I'll focus on how evaluators can usefully apply complexity even when the programs that they evaluate do not. I'm about to make what I hope is a persuasive argument for something that many of my colleagues won't like, namely that program designers have very good reasons for not recognizing complexity. Then I'll try to convince you that it's still a good idea for evaluators to incorporate complexity in their work. Remember this picture from the previous video? Program designers are smart. I'll bet they all know that they are working on the left, but that the picture on the right is correct. So, if they know better, why don't they act that way? They don't act that way because they are smart. They know that from a legal, political, economic, regulatory, and organizational point of view, recognizing complexity is very difficult. In fact, it may be impossible, and when it is possible, it may be counterproductive. Take a look at this picture to get a sense of why I think that it's so hard to apply complexity in program design. The picture in the middle is a common program design. It has some internal operations, some outcomes, and some connections among the elements. It's all executed pretty much as if the rest of the world did not exist. But the rest of the world does exist. Any program is connected to a set of multiple programs chasing multiple objectives, chasing multiple goals, all with an odd and mostly unknowable set of connections among them. Surely program designers know this, so why do they act as if they don't? Why is their behavior rational? This is why. Think of what would have to happen if a systems view were taken. We would need coordinated actions across multiple domains, and doing that would require common information systems, time for collaboration activities, complementary political agendas, compatible organizational cultures, similar schedules for decision making, complementary regulatory frameworks, informal working relationships among program personnel, aligned goals at multiple levels within organizational entities, working understandings among people with different professional backgrounds, and much else besides. And the broader the cooperation, the harder it would be. In fact, it might become so hard that it would become counterproductive. Why counterproductive? Because costs would go up, design would take longer, implementation would take longer, there would be lots of design compromises, it would be necessary to maintain a large coalition, there would be slower response to changing needs. Now, I don't want to be overly pessimistic. There certainly are lots of examples of coordination across domains. Also, I think that evaluators should advocate for taking a systems view whenever and wherever they can. But what evaluators cannot do is insist on it. If nothing else, that would put a lot of us out of work, and that we cannot have. Why am I so hesitant to push a systems view on customers? Because in my business, I get work when a civil servant comes to me and says, this is where I work, and these are the people I work with. I implemented a program, and I want to know if I did a good job. It was hard to implement that program. I had to spend political capital, public funds, and my personal credibility. It took a lot of time and effort to build the necessary coalition. I incurred many opportunity costs. I know the program is far from perfect, and I will pay you money to give me the data I need to make it better. But I also know something else. I know that my freedom of action to improve the program is extremely limited. I know a broader view is important, but I can't do it. I don't need you to tell me what I cannot do. I need you to tell me what I can do. So much for the down. Now for the upside. I'm convinced that even though program designers have trouble applying complexity, 
evaluators who use complexity can produce more powerful and more useful information for program designers. How can this be? It can be because program design and evaluation are not the same. They are related with respect to program content and structure, but they are not related with respect to methodology. For example, program designers never draw on multiple regression or grounded theory when they design programs. Those tools are in the evaluator's toolbox. Why shouldn't complexity be treated as just another specialized tool to be drawn on when needed? I hope the next three videos will convince you that I'm right.